Let's cast a coin to the Witcher and go over everything to make you a better bard. Stick with me and we'll get you barding in no time. This video is to promote the spirit of bard and how to play bard and it's just a stepping stone to the best bard you can be. Without further ado, let's jump into it. DPS tips. This goes for all DPS. Make sure you're always casting ABC. You should never really just be sitting there as you can always be keeping that GCD timer rolling. Understanding your rotation and weaving, eventually you will come to be weaving for all jobs as this is an essential part of Final Fantasy XIV and a relatively easy concept to grasp but still a little difficult to apply. I will link a weaving video down below so you can watch it at the end of this video if you need a little more help with that. Bard especially, you will have some moments of double weaving which means one GCD two OGCDs and one GCD again. Bard has a few points of double weaving, so don't get discouraged if it takes you a while to apply the concept. All DPS are different. You might find some similarities, but some have pretty solid long rotations while others are RNG heavy and everything in between. So don't approach DPS the same way. They are all unique and special. Let's talk about Bard 1 to 29. Now Bard is an RNG type of DPS as we are hoping for procs when using abilities. Procs just mean that when you use one ability, it has an RNG or random chance to proc another. You will see this by yellow borders in all jobs for Final Fantasy XIV. First off, we have Heavy Shot and Straight Shot. Heavy Shot is going to be your only GCD damage spell for the entire game practically all the way up to level 90. When using Heavy Shot, you will have a chance to proc or become Straight Shot ready. You'll want to prioritize Straight Shot whenever available as it does more damage. Next we have Raging Strikes, which basically increases your damage for 20 seconds by 15%. You'll just keep this on cooldown at first in order to keep your damage going well, but it is 120 seconds, so at first you'll feel like it takes a long time, but it gets quicker as you get more abilities to fill in between. Now we get one of two of the dots that are crucial for Bard, and that is Venomous Bite. For trash mobs, we can be using this to cast and dot as we're running, similar to how a healer will dot and run. For boss battles and single battles, you want to make sure to keep this up on your target at all times. Of course, the only time I wouldn't cast this is if the enemy is going to die or about to die and you won't get the most out of the dot. At level 12, we get Bloodletter, our first damage dealing OGCD, which means off global cooldown. You want to be using this or weaving this in between heavy shot or straight shot when it's available. Level 15 from your job class quest, you'll get Repelling Shot, which basically just has you jump 10 yams away from the current target that you're targeting. This actually can be pretty useful to get out of AoEs that you might have actually jumped into. Just make sure not to yeet yourself off the platform. Luckily for Bard, and one of my favorite things about the job is how dang early you get your damage AoE ability, which ours is Quick Knock. This is a melee range AoE in a cone formation, which means you have to be close to your enemies for this to hit. You will be the most useful DPS early on because of this AoE ability, as most don't get theirs until way later down the road. Now at this point, the dungeon runs are going to be fairly simple and you'll be very helpful. Perfect time to practice your dot or damage over time abilities. Tank will pull the mob and you will dot your first enemy. From here, you'll double weave Raging Strikes and Bloodletter and dot a second enemy. When the tank stops, you'll just be spamming your AoE Quick Knot. Now the general rule for Quick Knot and dotting enemies as you're running, if you can hit three enemies while you are running, then spam Quick Knot instead of dotting each enemy. If you can, and they're all kind of spread out, then you'll just want to dot each enemy until you can hit three enemies. So at this point, just start getting used to double weaving your Raging Strikes and your Bloodletter in the same window, and then just keep them on cooldown as they come up. Boss pulls at this point are even easier. Tank pulls Boss, Venomous Bite, Double Weave, Raging Strikes and Bloodletter, Heavy Shot, and just keep up Venomous Bite and keep attacking. Super straightforward. At level 30, we get Wind Bite. Same as Venomous Bite, but just slightly stronger. Now that we have both of our damage over time, there is a priority for using these. When in Trash Pulls, you'll want to use Wind Bite and dot each enemy as it's a slightly higher damage potency. For bosses, you'll always want both applied. We also get our first job song ability, and that's Mage's Ballad. Mage's Ballad is one of three songs that you will eventually get. Each song will have a special ability attached to it. So for Mage's Ballad, this is 1% damage buff for the entire party as it's playing. Doesn't sound like a lot, but this stacks with all of the other buffs that you will eventually be getting. So it will add up in the long run. 
You will also have a percent chance of granting repertoire, which is basically that special ability for each song. Mage's Ballad repertoire is reducing the recast time of Blood Letter, which is great because that means more damage. At level 35, we get the Warden's Peon. I think that's how you pronounce that. Peon? Peon? I'm not really sure. This is a support ability that removes a detrimental effect, or if the party member doesn't have one, creates a barrier to block the next detrimental effect. Great for tanks. Level 38, Barrage. This is an ability that will make you straight shot ready automatically and triples the number of strikes. So you would use this when straight shot is not procced because it will create it for you. Also, you want to focus on using this under raging strikes in order to increase the damage even more. Level 40, Army's Peon. Your second song ability for Bard increases direct hit by 3% for the party while active and the repertoire effect reduces weapon cast time, recast time, and auto attack by 4% each stack up to 4 times. Now don't underestimate this in low levels. 16% reduction in cast time and recast time is huge and can really help out with DPS output. With two songs now at this point, you do not want to overlap them. Let them fully play out in order to maximize the benefits of each song. At level 45, we get Reign of Death. Now this is just an AoE version of Bloodletter and is basically our way to put out massive damage during Mage's Ballad trash pulls, especially at later levels when your proc enchants increases tremendously. During trash pulls, you'll want to use Reign of Death and boss pulls, you'll want to use Bloodletter. At level 50, we get Battle Voice, a really great buff that can be activated when you have one of your three job song abilities activated. Increases direct hit of self and party by 20%. Huge. Now that we are at level 50, let's go over potential tank pull for Bard. Now this will be very fluid as it depends on what song is on cooldown until we get our third one. So there'll be times where you don't have a song playing under level 50. Tank pulls can be a little difficult as Bard as you are casting and running at the same time. So controller players, this can be a little bit of a pain. Just figure out where your skills work on your cross hotbar so you can run and hit abilities at the same time. Now when the tank will pull the trash mobs, you can dot an enemy with Windbite, double weave Mage's Ballad and Raging Strikes. Wind bite another enemy or quick knot if three or more enemies are present. By this time, you probably need to start spamming quick knot and weave in battle voice for the damage buff. Now, just keep using things off cooldown, rain of death, and cycling through your songs. It seems like a lot, but when you're playing the job, it gets really easy to get a good flow going. If you're not perfect at double weaving yet, then you can just weave one time in between each of these and expand out your rotation. But of course, the goal is to double weave where needed. The Bard is the only job that I use a floating hotbar in the middle of the screen. The abilities are just so RNG that it makes it widely more difficult to look down and keep everything casted perfectly as it's coming off cooldown. By simply adding a floating semi-transparent hotbar, you can see all the priority of abilities here. Highly recommend. Now luckily at level 52 we get our last song which is Wanderer's Minuet which makes the bard rotation actually easier if you could imagine. Having all three song abilities allows you to start creating markers or time places in your own mind where your rotation is depending on the song playing. Now generally the song obtained Wanderer's Minuet goes first in the rotation followed by Mage's Ballad and Army's Peon. Wanderer's Minuet is the highest DPS potential which is why we prioritize this first but sometimes on super big trash pulls, you might want to use Mage's Ballads first since Reign of Death is an AoE. These can be interchangeable to just the situation you're in. Either way, Army's Peon is always last, so just remember that. The ability attached to Wanderer's Minuet is pitch perfect. You gain stacks as the timer ticks down every three seconds. I usually use Pitch Perfect on two or three stacks, preferably three. Of course, there's a lot more that goes into it, but this is a beginner's guide, so just use it on two or three stacks between your GCD spamming and your general rotation. Now that we have all of our job abilities, the rotation is going to become pretty set from here on out, as basically your songs are your life for Bard and determine your strength. So the first rule is to have songs up at all times during battle. The recommended time for each song is as followers. Wander's Minuet for 43 seconds. Mage's Ballad for 34 seconds and Army's Peon is for 43 seconds. This will allow you to fully maximize each song and get back to Wanderer's Minuet as quickly as possible. This is per recommendation of the Balance Discord. 
From here, we're gonna go over the rest of our rotation. You'll find that Bard has a lot of cooldowns to manage. So again, the floating hotbar is gonna be a big use and using muscle memory for controller and keyboard players will be the goal. At level 54, we have Imperial Arrow, a very, very quick 15 second cooldown damage OGCD. Just another thing to weave in between everything else. Level 56, Iron Jaws. This will reapply both dots as long as they are active on the target. So if both of your dots, Wind Bite and Venomous Bite, are about to run out, you can use Iron Jaws to reapply both dots instantly. Iron Jaws also applies them with all the buffs and debuffs of you and your party, but that is for endgame high tier play. Just use it when it's about to run out. Level 60, Sidewinder, a 60 second cooldown damage OGCD. Just again, another damage ability to manage. Trobador. A support ability for damage mitigation, great for helping out the healer and tank with some damage mitigation on big pools or boss room-wide AoEs. From here, we get our upgrades to Wind Bite and Venomous Bite, which are Storm Bite and Caustic Bite. Cool, more damage. Nature's Min, another support ability for increasing healy recovering via healing actions. Another great ability for tanks on big pulls to help the healer with some improved healing. We get an upgrade to Refulgent Arrow from Straight Shot, so you'll just use this when procced with Heavy Shot. Level 72, Shadow Bite. This is basically an AoE version of Refulgent Arrow Straight Shot. This has a chance of proccing when using Quick Knot, which is your AoE ability. So use this whenever it pops up. I personally like to mirror these things on my cross hotbar. So I have Heavy Shot and Refulgent Arrow on one side and Quick Knot and Shadow Bite on the other side, just to separate between single target and AoE. We get Burst Shot at 76, just an upgrade that replaces Heavy Shot. A really key note here though, is that you have a trait unlocked at this level as well that sometimes is hard to miss, but is important. Now when using Caustic Bite or Storm Bite or Iron Jaws, you have a chance to proc Refulgent Arrow. So keep that in mind when casting those abilities on boss pools. At level 80, we have a new ability, Apex Arrow, and with that new ability, comes a new gauge, the soul gauge. This basically gives you five soul gauge every time that you get a repertoire from one of your songs. Again, the repertoires are the specific abilities that are affected by the song. So Mage's Ballad, Reign of Death or Blood Letter, Wanderer's Minuet, Pitch Perfect, Army's Peon, Reduction in Recast Time. All of these things will give you five soul gauge whenever they activate. This can max out at 100. You basically want to use this between 80 to 100 as we get an ability coming up that will proc when you use Apex Arrow above 80 soul gauge. At 82, we get an upgrade to Quick Knot. Finally, Quick Knot will now turn into Laden Bite. 86, we get Blast Arrow trait, which is easy. Just upgrades Apex Arrow to Blast Arrow when used above 80. So that's why we don't want to use Apex Arrow until you get your Soul Gauge to 80. Last but certainly not least, Radiant Finale. Even another gauge for a Bard. I know it seems ridiculous at this point, but at least it's not one you really have to worry about. When you use a job ability song, let's say Mage's Ballad, it grants a Coda. Now these can be used to provide damage buffs for the party. Now you can use this once you have all three codas after a full rotation of your job song abilities. Again, there is some end game stuff here that would make it more optimal, but we're just trying to utilize all the things here in order to make you an above average to great bard. Now you can see how quickly things kind of roll out of hand for Bard as they have a lot of OG CDs to manage, multiple job gauges to manage, and just a lot of stuff to keep track of. At this level, you've made it this far, I highly, highly recommend you start looking at the Balanced Discord as they will almost always have the most up-to-date opener and rotations for the job. They give you the opener for you to practice via this very cute opener image. Now the reason this is important as even though you are a casual player, understanding the job opener and timing for buffs makes you a better player and a better support player. So I will be referencing the Ballad Discord opener here. Let me be clear, you do not have to perfectly execute this every single time, but think of it this way, even if you execute 80%, 60% of this opener, then you're gonna be way leagues above people who are just spamming random buttons. So that's why I recommend going to a dummy in order to practice this opener for at least five to 10 minutes. 
I am a casual player. I do not do Savage and I mess up my rotation all the time when playing all these jobs because I play all the jobs for content creation purposes. Now, if you just play a few of the jobs, you're really going to be able to be leagues above everyone else when practicing your rotation just for five minutes a day or even once. Bard in particular is a difficult job comparatively at later levels due to the high amounts of RNG. So don't get discouraged if you feel overwhelmed or lost at certain points. Other DPS have solid rotations from point A to point B. Bard is kind of like point A to point Z with a lot of stops on the way. I really hope this video helped break down Bard for you and for you to understand the spirit of Bard and how to approach the job. If you got any value out of this video, then don't forget to limit break three that subscribe button and smash that like button to help support the video. You can find all of my social medias in the description box down below, as well as my public discord to join if you're looking for a helpful and educating community. If you want to watch more and Walker guides and tutorials, then you can click here.